Hello. Uh, so I'd like to start off, take, first of all, take a look at how this is spelled. So M-A-T-H-E-W. So one T. So that's like math. Ew. <laughs> and I find this really weird because even though math, ew, I'm actually a huge fan of math and a huge fan of science. And it was this love for math and science, this curiosity at an early age, which got me realizing it in grade nine. All right, I want to be an engineer. So you think, you know, kid meets his, he finds his dream, works towards it happily ever after. Pretty good, pretty good. No. Because in grade nine and in high school, not everybody shares the same curiosity for science as I did. Uh, not everybody respected it either. So as a result, what I ended up finding out is that I fell under the stereotype of, you know, being a geek, being a nerd. I couldn't feel like I was cool. I wasn't exciting. and I didn't feel like I fit in at all. And that's something that not anybody deserves to go through because it takes your confidence from up here and brings it down here. Um, eventually, though, I found the courage within myself to say, you know what, this is what I want to do. Haters are going to hate. I'm going to push through it. And that's how I passed grade 12 and went off into SFU. Um, but before I started studying in SFU, uh, this program, Science Live, is what I worked at uh, in a camp. So we're not a regular camp. We actually, um, we're, not this, we're, not, we're not your uh, standard camp where, you know, you take kids to the pool uh, or, you know, take kids to the park or play sports. We're a little bit different from that. Science Live is a member of the national organization known as Actua, um, who does this similar things to us and reaches 225,000 kids every single year. Let me read you uh, the mandate of Science Live, or their goal, and then we can go from there. So, it says, our mandate is to encourage, inspire, and expose youth of all backgrounds to the many fields of science, engineering, and technology through hands-on and interactive activities. So you're probably thinking, you know, Matt, that's quite a hand, that's quite a mouthful. What are you, what are you talking about? And uh, what I can say now is that, you know, you're sitting in it right now. That's exactly what it means. And if you're thinking now, Matt, that doesn't make any sense. What, what are you talking about? Well, where are we right now? We're in science world. And think about what science world does. You know, you see that the very heart of science world, science world is there to make science fun for kids. And that's exactly what Science Live does as well. And we condense it into a week of camp. Um, we tried to show to kids that, you know, science is more than just a book. Science is not boring. It is fun. It is not two-dimensional in a textbook. It is three-dimensional in our world. And it is alive. We also try to show that, you know, it speaks volumes of what you are as a person. It doesn't stop you from, science doesn't make you a boring person. It doesn't stop you from being fun and exciting. We're trying to take these stereotypes that are normally associated with the mad scientist and break those stereotypes down so that kids don't have to worry about being under those stereotypes. Um, so some of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis in, in, the, in the camp is we do, um, we make projects for the kids to take home. We do, um, demonstrations like the ones you see in the, uh, in the center atrium in, uh, in Science World. Um, one, here's one of the activities we do. So this is, uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, this is the Lego Mindstorms. Um, and this is a huge favorite among the kids because it really allo allows the kids to explore that, you know, the science or the engineering and the technology side of science. Uh, this kid here on the top left is making a uh, scorpion combined with a, well, with a car. He's getting a little creative. But on the right side, it looks like a laser tag set. And the reason why I'm showing this to you today, ladies and gentlemen, is because this taught me a thing or two, and I'd like to share. Number one, if you're teaching in a place where the kid's main objective is to have fun, these kids are going to look up to you. And as a, camp, uh, as a camp instructor, you know, the stress of a whole lot of, you know, having to take care of a bunch of things, sometimes you lose sight of that. These kids really do look up to you. And, um, but sometimes you get reminders like these that, you know, the kids really do uh, know that you're making a difference on them. Number two, if you give the kid uh, the chance to amaze you, they will amaze you. You see, how this thing worked right here is um, on the last day of camp, a bunch of these kids got all these spare parts, and they said, you know, we want to make some laser tag sets for you and the other instructors, Matt, so that you can play around with it. And these, like, these five kids sat down, and like a team of engineers decided, okay, we want to make this laser tag uh, set. Uh, here are the parts we have. Here, uh, how, here's how we're going to do it. And they worked on it for two hours without instructions at all. Y they made this without instructions. I can't even put a car together without a set of instructions. And those are block Lego. So this is, this, we're, we're talking real things here. Uh, and to be able to do that and to be able to just follow the curiosity with that much passion, that is something really special to see. Um, so let's go back to our mandate here. And it says, uh, Encourage, inspire, and expose youth of all backgrounds. So what is all backgrounds? What does it mean? Uh, well, it means that 
it means that we get uh, youth of both genders. We get youth of as many ages as we can, of uh, as many financial backgrounds as we can. We give uh, bursaries to those who need it. We also um, get kids from as many different um, cultural backgrounds as we can, and also uh, as many different places out in BC in something called outreach, which I'll, which I'll talk about later. Um, one of the things that we do is uh, this girls' camp, an all-girls science camp that runs throughout the summer, and an all-girls science club that runs throughout the fall and the spring. And uh, when I was being trained as an instructor, they told me the reason why we do this is, uh, well, one, girls are supposed to learn better in an all-girls environment, and two, uh, if you take a look at the different fields of science and engineering today, you know, you'll notice that sometimes the, men, the number of men and women aren't always the same. And more often than not, you'll find that the number of men is greater than the number of women. So by Encouraging girls to explore science at an early age, perhaps we can spark the interest in some of them and get them thinking, hey, you know, I could be like this lady doing research one day. You know, I can ignore the stereotypes associated with, you know, this, this crazy gray-haired mad scientist dude and push through and get to what I want, right? So what this lady here has is uh, it's a knee brace, and uh, essentially how this thing works is you hook it up to your knee, and the walking motion of your knee, so if you're, if you're walking, you, uh, you the motion of your knee will actually turn a generator inside there and will uh, create some electricity. So you're getting electricity on the go. Um, this has volumes of applications. The first one I could think of is if my phone dies, I could plug it in and it'll come back to life if I walk. But there are tons of other things that you could do with electricity on the go. So um, this is just one of the many uh, people who come from research areas and in the industry to come and talk to the kids and show them, you know, this is one thing that you could do when you grow up. So it gets the kids thinking. Um, on the next slide, we have pipe cleaner stick figures and magnets. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because when I, when I said, you know, we take science that's in the textbook, we bring it alive. Um, you, how, this, how this pipe cleaner thing works is, you know, you got like your, you got your pipe cleaner stick figure and um, you tie it down at the bottom. You tie it down at the bottom and you glue a magnet on top. The other magnet is above their head and it pulls, it pulls, the, um, pulls the pipe cleaner guy so he's standing. So no strings at the top, just magnetic pulling. And the reason why this is really, I think this is really cool is because normally when you teach kids about magnets, you think, okay, you got a north pole, you got a south pole, and, um, you know, like poles repel, opposite poles attract, and blah, 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 blah. But instead of just handing the ideas over to them, we're getting them to explore it themselves and really get it hands-on. Um, another reason why I like to show this is because when we were making our, um, when we were making our magnet, the instructors were making the example magnet stick, dude, um, the, the, we just had this really boring generic magnet, st or the stick guy. But then you see, look at some of the things these kids come up with here. I mean, like, see this, see this penguin? I mean, how do you make a penguin with pipe cleaners? That still puzzles me till today. So just the ability for kids to come up with ideas um, that, you can't even, that you probably would never have thought of, that's amazing. And once again, if you give kids the chance to amaze you, guess what's going to happen? They will amaze you. Uh, it's really nice to see where this creativity and the science comes together, because that is not something that you see every day. Um, another thing that we do is we also, uh, like I said before, go on something called outreach. And um, this, the idea of outreach is we go to far off communities uh, up in northern BC where kids wouldn't have the chance to come to our camps. So if they don't have the chance to come down here to come to Science Live camps, we bring the Science Live camps up to them. And uh, just like the camps that I teach on outreach, that I teach in SFU, and the ones that I teach, uh, workshops that I teach in the Lower Mainland, uh, the idea here about these three C's, getting these C's, they're not grades, they're different kinds of C's. You see, it starts off with, you have your curiosity. You have your curiosity and you're curious about something. Normally in science, it's about science. Um, but you have your curiosity and you want to know more about it. So you, you, know, you go on and explore, and eventually you hit a brick wall and you realize that you're running into a couple of difficulties. So at that point, it is up to you to find that courage to push through that brick wall so that you can get to what you want to learn at the end. And when you do, that's when you have more confidence. So, for example, right here, um, this boy is holding this white lump, and that's actually a piece of plastic. Uh, I show these to the kids at the very beginning when we start the activity, and I say, this is plastic, and you can make it yourself. They ask me, well, Matt, how do you make it? And I tell them, well, well in my head, this is what I'm thinking, you know, this is where the curiosity starts. So we start by getting a beaker, or a, like a glass container that scientists use, fill it up with milk, heat it up, and you heat it up till it curdles, okay? and you got your, now you have curdly milk that smells kind of funny. You walk over to your vinegar, which also smells kind of funny. You grab that, walk back to your curdled milk, and you pour something funny, 
into something that also smells funny. So you got something that smells really funny. And, and then, you know, kids have really different responses at this time. Uh, some kids are like, oh, it's so gross. I love it. But then some kids are like, ew, this is really gross. And I don't really like it at all. So those are the kids that I like the challenge. You know, I tell them, you wanted to learn how to make this. And, uh, you know, you're running into a little bit of problems here. But I promise you, if you get over the smell, you will get to what you wanted to find out in the first place. And with enough of convincing, they come up with the courage to be able to, uh, you know, just get over that smell. So you, uh, you stir it around, you get the chunks of uh, stuff that forms at the bottom, you filter that out and you let it dry, and within a couple hours, you got yourselves pieces of plastic that look like that. And that's when I remind them, you know, you were curious about something, you pushed through, you ran into troubles, you had the courage to leap over that, and you got to what you want in the end. So I hope you have the confidence to be able to do that again by yourself. And really, it doesn't apply to just making plastic. You see, this can be applied to anything. When I was in high school, I was really curious about science, but at times was embarrassed that I was being too much of a geek. But then eventually found the courage to push through that and get to what I wanted at the end. But you see, this doesn't apply to just science either. It can apply to anything that you want to learn, ladies and gentlemen. It can apply to anything you, you want to learn. So that is my message for you today. And that's what I want you to take home that if you want to learn something, if you're curious, go for it, explore. Along the way, you're going to run into problems, but it's up to you to be able to see, you know, over this brick wall, this is what I want to get to the other end. So you've got to push through that. And when you learn what you want to learn, you will feel a lot more confident in the end. Thank you.